Welcome to worship this morning. This morning's call to worship is taken from the Sermon on the Mount. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray. Please stand and let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Good morning, everyone. Please stay standing as we sing together, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and then God So Love. We'll sing the first three verses on All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, bring forth the royal diadem. Chosen seed, ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace. Every kindred, let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To so love. Come all ye weary, come all ye thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst. mercy come to the table he will satisfy taste of his goodness find what you're looking for for God so love for God so love the world that he gave us his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved, 
So love. morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Amen. It's so good to be together with you in person. And if you're at home joining us online, we are so glad you are with us and joining us online as well. We have a couple of quick announcements. It's a very busy day this morning. First, Father's Day is coming up. So we've got a couple weeks, the 19th, especially Ben, if you're out there, it's coming up soon. Make sure it's on your calendars. Make sure you celebrate dads. Uh, but Father's Day sub sandwiches, please see any member of Women's Fellowship to purchase a sub sandwich. All proceeds are going towards the mission and support and outreach. So be sure to get your sub sandwiches early and often as we're preparing for Father's Day. Also, if you can tell, we have a little thing coming up called VBS. So again, I want to thank um, everyone helping, especially uh, Cheryl, Patty, and uh Kim, so let's hear it for their, their arches, right? I mean, I was like, how in the world are they doing all this? With a little bit of, yeah, there you go, Patty's making sure that everybody can see all the stage at home. It, 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 there's nothing like it here. And I was like, how in the world did they do this? So that's beautiful. So VBS is on June 13th through the 17th, so it's coming up. Last I checked, we have 13 kids registered, which is great. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And so, but hopefully we'll have some more. Be sure as you uh, leave today, we still have some M&Ms, so they're not, they're not all eaten. And hopefully, uh, I was talking to Leanne, and she opened one, and there was a color missing, right? The green were gone. So be sure to get in there. And if you don't get all the colors in one, maybe take another one. Share it with some other folks. Pray for VBS. Um, and so that's coming up, not next week, but the following, following week. It's almost here. Uh, so you can register in person back in the table, or you can also register online. So if you're talking with a, a relative or a neighbor, you can even help walk them through that. But today, we're going to be gathering at 1030, uh, if you're interested to do a walkthrough for VBS. So everyone that's volunteer, we're encouraging you all to come downstairs at 1030, meet in the library, is that right? Meeting in the sanctuary, in the back. So be in here at 1030. Uh, we're going to walk through the church, kind of walk through what's, what's going on, and also pray over um, VBS this morning at 1030. Um, so this morning is also an exciting day because we are going to be commissioning Jacob in just a minute, um, but we're also going to be having a reception after church in the fellowship hall. So those that are part of VBS, you need to hustle down, grab your donut, your coffee, and then come back up as we do our walkthrough. Um, and so we're going to uh, do a little bit of both today. So Jamie's pulling double duty as she's going to be leading people through the, the VBS walkthrough and then also uh, being received as well. Um, so that's going to be right following after the service, following the service, uh, is the reception for Jacob and Jamie. So now, as I mentioned, I'm going to ask Jacob to st uh, step forward. 
Um, Jacob has been called by God in accordance with the faith and the faith and order of this church to serve among us. He has accepted his call and is before us in witness to his willingness to serve as music minister of Re Redeemer Evan Evangelical Church. It's a special honor and privilege to be entrusted with the responsibility for the service in the ministry of the church. I'm going to ask Jacob before the congregation to please affirm or uh, reaffirm his willingness to serve God and this church. Having prayerfully considered the duties and responsibilities of being music minister, are you prepared to serve with the help of God in Christ's name and the power of the Holy Spirit to the glory of God? If so, please respond with, I am. Do you promise to, sh to exercise the duties of your ministry diligently and faithfully, showing forth the love of Christ? If so, please respond, I do, relying on God's grace. So now, members, I'm going to ask you to stand if you're able to stand. Members of Redeemer Evangelical Church, you have heard the promises of Jacob, our brother in Christ, who has answered God's call to service this, this church. Let us affirm our intention to live in covenant with him. Will those, uh, and I've already asked you to stand, so there we go. Um, please uh, read this together. We gather in celebration of the joy that is ours to be partner with you in the service of Jesus Christ. We promise to love you, honor your leadership, and assist you that together we may be a faithful church of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. And now I'm going to ask if, if you're a council member that's present, please come forward. I'm going to ask you to actually come up, and if you feel comfortable to, to lay hands on Jacob. And for those that are seated, I would encourage you to place a hand forward uh, to show your symbolic of your laying on of your hands of Jacob. We, sim uh, we symbolically lay hands, and those on the council are laying hands. Um, is a symbolic act whereby the church in every age recognizes God's call to ministry in the lives of faithful men and women. We ask the Holy Spirit to fill him with the strength, courage, and wisdom to fulfill his calling. Therefore, we lay hands upon Jacob as the music minister of Redeemer Evangelical Church. May the Holy Spirit strengthen you for the ministry of this church as music minister and equip you with everything good to do God's will. Receive the authority to execute the office of music minister in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's pray together. Eternal God, you have called Jacob to serve you in this household of faith in the, in the world, which you have entrusted to our care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit upon him that he may serve among us with honor and faithfulness. Help him to be diligent in his duties that your church may prosper in the, mi in the mission you have placed before it. May his example prove worthy for all of us to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and on behalf of the people of Redeemer Evangelical Church, I rejoice to announce that and welcome you to the staff of Redeemer Church as our music minister. You may now clap. All right, thank you, Al. You all may be seated. And now, as our council members descend, I'm going to ask Jamie Pollard to ascend and to join us on stage. So not only is uh, Jacob joining the staff, but he and Jamie have decided also to become official members of our church. And so this morning, Jamie and Jacob, after prayer and reflection, have been led by the Holy Spirit to come forward to become members of Redeemer Church. We ask all new members and current members are pledged the following. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, the Evangelical Church of the Redeemer, sharing regularly in the worship of God, upholding it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and enlisting in the work of his local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please say, I will with the help of God. 
uh, let us pray together. Or actually, I'm sorry. Let's, let's all stand if you are able to stand, and please repeat this um, after me. Let us, the members of Evangelical Congregation of the Redeemer, Redeemer, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. So please say this with me. We welcome you with the common life of the church. We promise you our friendship and our prayers as we share the hope and labors of the church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Let's pray together. O oh God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for the gathering us into the church of the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the Evangelical Congregation of the Redeemer, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this church family. Yay. Let's hear it for Jamie and Jacob. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And so now, we're not done yet. We still have prayers. So as we're going to find out here in just a minute in Acts, one of the acts of the apostles in the early church was to pray together, for the, uh, to say prayers for one another. Uh, so this morning, whether you're online, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, just mention it into the comments, and Patty will make sure that we uh, hear it here in the church. But if you have a prayer request or praise, we'd love to hear it. So please uh, just raise your hand, and I'd love to lift that up in prayer this morning. Kelly. Who does? Evie turns four today. Yay! Four is a big year. It's an even one. You're not quite in school. Almost. All those school days. What else? Harry. What happened? Okay, so Carl has COVID. So just be, uh, is Lorraine doing okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. We appreciate that. <laughs> and so, but be in prayer for Carl as he has COVID. And so just make sure that he, he uh, recovers. Doing okay. Okay. I saw Sharon. Yeah. So just... Praises that Denny started, especially on Friday, to doing better, and we just need to keep him on that track for Denny and for Sharon as well. So help De Denny to continue to recover well. I see Julie. So who's turning? To, wait, I've got two. We've got two birthdays, both 21. Were you guys born on the same day? Wait a second. What? Congratulations. What an exciting day that would have been. And 21, glad you're here today. That's, that's impressive. Way to go. Extra bonus points. God points today. Jesus points today. 21st birthdays are exciting. Andrew made it to Ireland. We have pictures. Their flight got canceled on Thursday with apparently every other American flight that happened, uh, you know, on Thursday with storms going through Dallas and Charlotte. So they were sad they couldn't fly out on Thursday. But they got out yesterday, and we got texts throughout the night of pictures of sunrises in Ireland and whatnot. So that was good. Anybody else? Penny. Two o'clock, that late night. But you're here. Look at you. You look good. So Gus is back from Florida, and we're glad that you're here with us this morning. So good job, Gus. And you made it from Florida, so that's even better. And Yes, thanks to Gary. I saw him last week. Uh, that was the day before he went out to put up uh, flags. And so he was uh, making sure that it was ready to go. So yay for the little library. Julie. Yay. 
Yay, yes. We're, we're praising God for Jamie because she is helping uh, VBS to be a success already and very detail-oriented, thank God, because I am not, as Patty well knows. Um, and so, but Jamie is a, a blessing to our church already. So let's hear it for Jamie. One, I want us to do it. also for that as well. All right. Well, let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for such an exciting morning. We're so thankful for Jamie and Jacob and bringing them to our church and all the gifts uh, that they, they are as people, but all the ways they're also able to uh, bless our congregation and our community. Father, we, we're so thankful for birthdays, whether you're turning four or 21, they're all exciting. And so we're so thankful that we can celebrate birthdays together as a congregation. Father, we lift up those that are still recovering. We pray for Carl, uh, and we pray for Denny. Father, that you would continue to help heal them and to restore their health. Father, uh, for those that are giving care, uh, we also lift those up as well to give perseverance and patience for the patients. Father, we also lift up Gus. We're so thankful that he is among us this morning. Thank you for safe travels, and thank you for, for being awake this morning after a long night. Father, we're so good, glad to be in the house of the Lord. We don't take that for granted. Um, and so we are so thankful we can gather together this morning. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are continuing in the Heidelberg Catechism, which is one of the statements of faith our church was founded. We are looking at the Lord's Day 35. Question 95. What is God's will for us in the second commandment? Answer. That we in no way make an image of God nor worship him in any other way than has been commanded in God's word. Question 97. May we then not make any image at all? Answer. God cannot and may not be visibly portrayed in any way. Although creatures may be portrayed, yet God forbids making or having such images if one's intention is to worship them or to serve God through them. Question 98. But may not images be permitted in churches in place of books for the unlearned? Answer. No, we should not try to be wiser than God. God wants the Christian community instructed by the living preaching of his word not by idols that cannot even talk. I'd ask all those that can stand, please stand. We're going to call a little bit of an audible today. We're just going to do O4000 oh, Tongues to Sing. We will not do the song, Lord, I Need You, just to be sensitive to time. We'll sing the first three verses of O4000 oh, Tongues to Sing. If you would, go ahead and turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2. We are continuing our study in the book of Acts this morning. So whether it's your paper Bible, whether it's your electronic version, whether you're flipping 
for swiping. We're in Acts chapter 2 this morning. And in this study of the book of Acts, we are going back in time. We are looking at the, the, the function of the early church from the time when Jesus was resurrected with the 40 days that he was with the disciples, teaching them, instructing them, and then 10 days later, he ascended to heaven. We saw that in chapter 1. And so far in chapter 2, we've seen as Jesus ascended up to heaven, we see the Holy Spirit descend down upon the apostles on God's people. And then last week, we saw over 3,000 people join the church after Peter's sermon. Now, that's a powerful sermon to have that many people to give their life to Christ. So this morning, we are continuing to see kind of what happened. And this is a beautiful passage, one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture, especially for the early church, especially for our church today. So again, we're in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And it says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship of the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord in our hearing this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for Luke. We thank you for his witness. Father, that he was so diligent to go and to get eyewitness accounts and to write them down, not only for Theophilus, but also for us today, over 2,000 years later. Father, I pray that we would be encouraged by this passage today. Father, that we would be challenged by this passage today. Father, I pray that, that Jesus would be made much of this morning. Father, I pray for each of us here in person and those that are at home, Father, that the Holy Spirit would work mightily wherever we are. Father, that we would hear your voice and that you would give us all changed hearts this morning. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So at the outset, what I want to make sure that we understand with this passage is that this passage is a descriptive passage. It's not an imperative passage. And so that's the difference. Whenever we see in Paul's epistles, especially regarding the church, we see a lot of imperatives, things we have to do, things he's calling us to do. These are describing what happened in the early church after Peter's sermon, after they left, after they, the days pre preceding this sermon, after all of these people professed their faith, what happened in the days following this sermon. And that's what we see here. That's what Luke is recording here. And I think it's a beautiful passage because it's something that we need to hear today, that they were all in one accord. This is the unity of the early church. And in such a divisive society today, it's something that we need to hear to this morning about the unity of the church and how we are shining light in our society. And so here in 42, we see that they devoted themselves to four things. Again, 42 says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So we see four things that the early church, as they gathered together daily, that they devoted themselves to. One is the apostles' teaching. Two, it's to the fellowship. Three, the breaking of bread. And four, prayers. Now here what we see is the apostles' teaching. So Luke is, is pointing out that they're learning more than just the Old Testament. So here, if we go back in time, if we go back into our TARDIS, for you that are Doctor Who fans, and we go back with the doctor, back, to the, back in time to this time and this place, they're not going to have a printed Bible in front of them, Right? Oftentimes, whenever I've heard this scripture preached in churches, they say it's the word of God. And yes, it is, 
but it's not how we think of the Word of God. Here they are getting the instructions from the apostles' teaching. Now remember, the apostles just had spent 40 days with Jesus. And in those 40 days, he was breaking down where he was throughout Scripture. In the Old Testament, where he was in the book of Psalms, where he was in the book of Amos, in the book of Isaiah, all of these passages, Jesus was teaching them. And now they were teaching the brethren. Now remember, a couple of weeks ago, we said there was at least 120 members that would have been able to form the council for this new sect of Judaism. And then there, now there's over 3,000 from this last sermon, right? And what we find out here is more people are being added daily. So we're talking about a lot of people. Now all of these folks, all of these 3,000 that may have been raised in the synagogue as good Jewish little kids, they knew the Old Testament, but they didn't know about Jesus. They didn't understand how Jesus engaged with the Old Testament, where he was there. And so these are all baby Christians. These are all kindergartners getting ready to start their education of who Jesus is. So this apostles' teaching is a very relational text because it's an oral tradition that the apostles just learned from Jesus, and now they are passing on to the next generation of Christians, right? So they're understanding who Jesus is, and so they are enthralled about who Jesus is. How this all, how the beauty of Scripture and how God has planned everything to coincide so brilliantly. And so they, they're learning this daily. So they are listening to the apostles' teaching, which means that it's not necessarily all of just the apostles specifically teaching, but it's their teaching, their understanding. And so it's not just the apostles' teaching, but it's their understanding of who Jesus is, is going forward. The other important thing to understand is that these gatherings that we see here are not like what we're experiencing here this morning. They didn't have any church buildings. They had the temple that they would attend that we see later. But they were primarily doing all of these things in their homes. So as we look at small group Bible studies and as we, we, we plan those out, they are going to look more like this than this time of worship together where we get together to study God's word or the apostles' teaching, right? So here, each of these houses, each of these 3,000 that are scattered through, throughout Jerusalem and, and going back to where they came from, right? As we saw in, earlier in chapter 2 that they, they were from around the world. As they go back, these are the things that they're devoting themselves to. So they, they're devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. We also see that they are, they are devoting themselves to the fellowship. And I love this part. Now this Greek word here is koinea. Now, the fellowship kind of, it does mean literally the group of people there, but it's also a concept. This idea of koinea, actually this was a Hellenistic Greek uh, ideal that people would gather together and spend their times together, spend their days together, their meals together, and enjoy each other together. So this fellowship is more than this, although you guys are great. What I think of whenever I think of the fellowship, I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings. Like they have a purpose they have a common goal. They are setting off from, uh, from the elves to go get the ring and destroy the ring together. That is what these folks are. So we, as we see Peter Jackson's slow pan of the whole fellowship going out, that is us this morning. About how God is calling us all to witness to who Christ is. Teaching others what we've been taught about the apostles' teaching. Gathering, gather them amongst our midst. They are also called to break bread together, and we're going to be doing that this morning. Every time the, the believers got together, they broke bread. Now, if you read scholars, they like to have a healthy dialogue about this. Now, what do they mean, breaking bread? Now, scholars disagree a little bit on whether they meant of actually literally having dinner together, because they did. They had meals daily together. They understood uh, that everybody needed to eat, and they would fix meals together. They would clean dishes together. They would have the breaking of bread together. But other scholars would also say the wording here intentionally of breaking bread is of the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. 
that every time they would get together, even though it was daily, they took what Jesus said literally, and every time they gathered together, they remembered Jesus' death until he came, right? So here, we have the apostles teaching. They were, at, they were feeding their mind, so to speak. And then they were also meeting together with the fellowship, encouraging each other uh, in the fellowship. So they were, they were feeding themselves relationally and emotionally, right? And now they're feeding themselves spiritually by breaking bread together, reminding themselves of the importance of Jesus and who he is and what he's done and celebrating his death and resurrection and ascension, right? So that's the breaking of bread. And then we also see the prayers. Now, the prayers of the other church. This isn't singular. This isn't a prayer. This isn't a liturgy. This isn't the Lord's Prayer, as much as it's good to hear the Lord's Prayer in service. But this is the prayers of the people. And even, and I'm not going to go through, this, through that, this this morning, but one of the things I did print off um, is prayers of the earliest Christians. So here's several pages of early prayers that they had. So if you're interested, I did my homework, and you can check my homework. Um, but we don't have time to go through all of these prayers this morning. But these prayers were vital in, in together praying for one another and praying for wisdom, praying for perseverance and strength for the new church. And so while, again, I said earlier that these are all descriptive of what happened, they are also important because they were healthy for the early church to do. That these are things that were, were helping this early church to one, be passionate for God, to go forward and take his good word with them wherever they went. And so for us, these are all ingredients of, of being healthy Christians. That are we submitting to the apostles' teaching? Are we looking to understand who God is in the Old and New Testaments? Are we checking and encouraging on one another? Are we gathering together in fellowship with one another regularly? Are we breaking bread together regularly? Not just in communion, but also in eating meals. When we slow down and we get off our phones, which I know is difficult, even at dinner, you always go out today and you see a restaurant and a couple, they're both on their phones. And I'm guilty of that as well. But we can set them down and actually have a conversation. How is your week? What's going on at work? How's so-and-so doing? How can I help? Right? Those are all important parts of being in relationship with one another and being part of a fellowship together and breaking bread together. And it's also important to pray for one another. That's one of the reasons why we have it every week in our services. So we can lift up each other in prayer. And so these are important aspects to the fellowship, to the early church. And we need to learn on how, ask the question, are we accomplishing those or not? Verse 43. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. So here we see that the apostles were doing uh, different miracles. We just uh, saw a healing, or we will be seeing a healing next week. And so, and we're going to see even later on, even as people, as Peter walks by them, his shadow, even as his shadow falls on, on people, they are healed. These are miraculous things that we don't always experience today. But with the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, with people speaking in tongues, with people devoting themselves to one another, people are a little freaked out. Like, what is happening? Is this the end of the world? I don't know what's happening. Because this, this word awe here actually is the Greek word phobos, or phobia, that we like to hear, right? So they are afraid and freaked out about what's happening. They're seeing people speak in different languages. They're seeing these healings, and so they are intrigued. And that is inspiring them, and that is focusing their worship to understand that God is a, an extraordinary God. Our friend Merriam-Webster uh, defines awe as an emotion variously uh, combining dread, veneration, and wonder that is inspired by authority. 
or by the sacred or sublime. And this wonder, this wonder that these new Christians are experiencing are helping to inspire and motivate them to go forward, to tell others about what they've seen and experienced. And do we have that same awe? Do we have that same same inspiration to go forward and tell people what we've experienced? Or has it all become part of the mundane, that this is just our daily experience, and so we don't even are phased by it, and so our, our emotions are a little deadened because it's what we experience every day. Where are we with how we feel about God? Verse 44 and 45 says this, And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any has need. So what this says is y'all need to go home and sell your houses and cars, boats, and bring it and give it back to, and donate it all to the church. Hey, it's all good. It's tax deductible, but we appreciate your donation. That's not what it's saying. Although it'd be great if you did. <clears throat> what this means, first of all, it means that there is a trust and unity in the church, in the early church, that we haven't, that we don't always experience today. Because it says in 44, all who believed were together and had all things in common. Now, did they agree on everything? No. But it means that their priorities is what's driving them. These are the things that they held in common. These are the things that they cared about and they were motivated by. So they didn't let politics get in the way. They didn't let sports teams get in the way. They didn't let squabbles about possessions get in the way. They had all things in common. They were all motivated by God and what he was doing in them and around them. That was what was motivating them. And because they were so relational, they cared about what everyone else around them was experiencing. Life was difficult then, just as it's difficult now. People were still hungry. They still had needs. And as they're eating together and talking with each other, they're understanding what needs are there. And so they're becoming a family. And what do families do? They meet each other's needs. And so what do we see is in 45, as they started selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. So this one, we need to understand that this, this camaraderie, this unity, this familial dynamic that we're seeing has three components. We see, one, it has vulnerability. Yikes. Anybody just like tense up a little bit like vulnerability? I don't like that word. I have to share that I'm not perfect, that I can't do everything on my own, and that I either need help completing a project that I've been working on, sharing that, hey, I have this stressor that keeps stressing me out that I can't get rid of. Maybe it's a physical ailment that I need to share, that I need prayer for, that I don't want to share. But it's all me being vulnerable and trusting those people around me that they're going to keep it in confidence, they're going to lift me up, and they're going to support me. They're going to be there whenever I share it. They're not going to mock me for it. They're not going to disregard it as not important. They're not going to say, I'm going to pray for you about that and then just not follow up on that. Not that Christians ever do that. They have to be vulnerable. There's a sincerity around them. They actually want to hear how everyone else is doing. They want to actually be engaged with them and what's going on in their lives. They're sincere about that. They're being authentic, who God is calling them to be, and they're putting everything out on the table. That's scary. I don't know about you, but to do all of those things, what these folks in the early church were doing was extremely trusting, not only in God, but those people around them, and many of them they didn't even know all that well, right? Right? But they had all things in common. Now, one, a couple of things that I want to make sure that a, as I hear people talk about this passage that we see. Now, this isn't a form of communism or socialism. 
Because I see this, that people ask about this, especially in, in political means. Now, this isn't a political stance. They're not, this isn't even a command. We're going to talk about this next week with Ananias and Sapphira. They're going to, and I know spoilers, I know, it's always bad to get spoilers. They ruin friendships and youth groups, as I've been told. But, but spoiler alert, next week we find out that God is going to kill two members of this community because they don't give all their stuff. Now, is God killing them because they don't give all their stuff? No. Peter's going to be very clear about that. They are lying about what they're giving because they're still holding on to wanting that autonomy, that control. They don't want to give it to God. They don't really trust God. They don't really trust everybody else, which is going to grow division among them, right? And schism between them and potentially the church. So God's not against private property. We don't see that here, although I've heard that said. He's not talking about that everyone is required to give everything to the church. He's not saying that. That all of these folks relationally are give, going and selling what they had and giving it to the church for other people. Willingly. Volitionally. They're not even getting a tax break for it. Now, do they have 30-year mortgages? No. Do they have cars? No. Is it all that they have? Yes. Right? So we should be inspired and challenged by these folks here to be able to give so generously and willingly. Because you know what? I'm not like these folks. I'm not willing to give up my house and my air conditioning. And so may this be an inspiration and challenge us this morning. 46. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is one of the fascinating parts of my study. I love scripture. I always find new nuggets that I never saw before. And that's what I saw here is they were attending temple together, right? That was a little like, what is going on? If someone said, hey, Jeff, did you, did, if you, did you go to temple this week? I'd be like, no. So what's going on? Why are they attending temple? One, it's because they're teaching the Old Testament, right? They're still doing prayers. They're still gathering together. They are still keeping some of these same practices, going into God's temple and praying and participating in some of the actions that Jewish people were accustomed to here. They were still going to temple together. They were still meeting people. They were still drawing them to Christians. And scholars say that actually that at this time, the Christians in the Jewish community were seen as helpful. And they were a part of the community. And they weren't seen as divisive at this particular time because they were attending the temple together. And so this was part of their daily practice is that they would say, hey, you want to meet up at temple together before we go to dinner? You yeah, sure, let's go there. And then they would go back to their homes. They would have, they would fix dinner. They would break bread together, Right? And this was part of their daily dialogue. So they'd work, temple, break bread. Very simplistic. It's almost like a Friends episode. They're going to Central Perk after they get done with work, right, and gather together. And then it says they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Why? Because they didn't have as many stressors. They knew that people had their back. They knew that they weren't going to have any needs. That God was providing their daily bread. They were able to eat it and break it. And so all of their needs, physical, emotional, social, were being met. This is beautiful. So they were receiving this with glad and generous hearts. They understood, where did this daily bread come from? Is it what I did or what God did? God did it. Thank you. Now, whatever I have, God's going to provide it for you. And so what we see is they also understood that what's one of the key words here at this last sentence? Who added to their number day by day? Was it Peter's preaching? Was it his dynamic presentation? Was it his PowerPoint? Was it his illustrations from Joel? No, the Lord added to their, day, their numbers daily. It was God's generousness 
bringing them together, helping them to see what he was doing, that awe that they were experiencing, they were going and telling others. And as they did that, you know what happened? People said, I want a piece of that. How do I experience that? And you know what? They were joining their numbers. Shocking, right? So this is what we need to look to. Is, is our church like the ch- that of the early church? Are we devoting ourselves to the apostles' teaching? Are we devoting ourselves to fellowship with one another? Are we devoted ourselves to breaking of bread together? Not just here on the first Sunday of the month, but throughout the week, throughout the month, breaking bread together. And are we committed and devoted to praying for one another? So here are some some questions that we need to think about. How do we view our church community? Is coming to church a burden or a blessing? On Sunday morning, what's the first thing in your mind? Yay, I get to go to church. I get to see my people this morning, my tribe. That's why I say every Sunday, it's so good to be here with you guys. I'm excited to see you all. We're like, I got to go to church again. Mom just woke me up for church. I've got to get ready. It's my only day off, and here I am getting ready to go see all these people again. Ugh. Burden or blessing? What do we own that we're like, I'm not selling this, no matter what. I like this person. I like Penny a lot, but I'm not going to sell this because this is worth more than Penny. What is that that I own that is more valuable than anybody else? Because we wouldn't say that. I'm not going to say, hey, I'm not going to sell my car for Penny. But if Penny needed it, would I be willing to? Something to think about. What do we believe whenever we invite people to church? What are we inviting them to? Is it just the apostles' teaching? Most churches, they, they focus on a couple of these, but not all of them, Right? So sometimes we view church as the apostles' teaching. You're coming to hear a seminar every Sunday morning to be educated, to learn more about the Bible, and that's what we're inviting people to. Are we inviting people to a good concert? Right, Jacob? Right, con- good concert? Good music? Some guitar? You, you and Jocelyn play. I'm trying to get a banjo for you all. That's, that's on my to-do list. Are we inviting them to a concert? Or are we believing that we're inviting them to the fellowship to be part of our lives so they have people to care for them and to show them and teach them who Jesus is and that they have someone to have their back. So we're inviting them for information, an informational gathering or a relationship. And finally, who are we trusting to add to our numbers? Are we trusting a pastor with a good message? a good music minister, a really cool website that's coming soon. What are we trusting that God's going to bring us people? Are we praying daily that God would increase our numbers like he did here? Are we trusting that God is going to, to bring them? Or are we fearful? Or are we more fearful that people are going to leave than come? Where are we? Where are we this morning? Let's pray together. Father, we, we lift up these things to you. Father, we, we pray that you would be with each of our hearts. Father, that you would see our hearts, what we're trusting in. Are we trusting in our own work? Are we trusting in our own fear more than you? Father, I pray that you would guide each of us. Are we devoted to your word? Are we devoted to the apostles' teaching, the understanding of who Jesus is in our lives today, who Jesus was in the Old Testament? Father, we pray that you would help us to prioritize Jesus, that we would have all things in common, just like the early church. Father, I pray that we would see people more important than things. Father, that we would reach out and invite people to be part of our community not to add another person to the roles, not to add someone else, another seat to be filled, but Father, that they are 
made in your image, that they are image bearers, and that they need to be cared for and loved just as you care and love for us. Father, I pray that you, through your spirit, would challenge each of us one thing that we need to, to change as a result of hearing this today. Father, I pray that whether we're here in person or whether we're home, Father, that I pray that you would work mightily in each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, this morning is Communion Sunday. It is a day when we break bread together. So I'm going to invite our ushers to prepare to get ready as we prepare for the breaking of bread. So as we see this in Scripture, we see that the earliest Christians would gather together to remember what Christ did. Had did what, what Christ did for them. And so, as we take communion together, this is an act of faith. This is an, a time when we remember what Christ did, that he lived the perfect life that we are supposed to live, that Christ died the death that I was supposed to die because of my sin, that Jesus defeated death as, and is inviting me to join him in his resurrection. And then one day we will all be glorified just as Jesus is today. That Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So here in a moment I'm going to invite the ushers forward. We're going to have a time of corporate confession of sin. And the ushers will, will pass out the elements, the bread and the juice. And then as we reflect, as we, re we have time, let's reflect on our confession of sin. We reflect on the early church and where we are. And then as they come back, we will have an assurance of pardon, and then we will hear the institution, and then we'll eat and drink together. So ushers, please come forward. So if you would, please repeat with me this corporate confession of sin. Almighty God, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. Deepen within us our sorrow for the wrongs we have done and the good we have left undone. Lord, you are full of compassion and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. There is always forgiveness with you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Bind up that which is broken. Give light to our minds, strength to our wills, and rest to our souls. Speak to each of us and let your word abide with us until it has wrought in us your holy will. Amen.
So friends, please read this assurance of pardon with me. Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself our people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Thanks be to God for this inexpressible gift. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he also took the cup and poured it out, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant. As often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim my death until I return. Friends, when you're ready, eat and drink. Stand for those who are able to stand as we sing Come Thou Fount. We'll just sing with the first verse only, Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount of every blessing To my heart to sing Thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I fixed upon it Mounds of thy redeeming love Friends, it has been a blessing to be with you here in, a, uh, in person and at home. We're so glad you could join us. Be sure uh, to join us downstairs uh, to welcome Jamie and Jacob, and then come back upstairs at 1030 for our VBS walkthrough and prayer. Be sure to grab some M&Ms. Hopefully you'll get some green ones this time, Leanne. And then we're so glad uh, to be together. Uh, today our benedictions found in Jude 24, verses 24 and 25 says this. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now forever. Amen. Go in grace and peace this morning.